Finding Nemo has always had a special place in my heart since I was a kid. After Toy Story 2, this was one of my favorite growing up. It was a mixture of the beautiful colors and the funny characters that captured me on every viewing. In fact, it captured me so much that I stopped eating fish for about 10 years because of how well I connected with them. My dad loved me when he would take me out to sushi. Finding Nemo, at its core, is a very emotional trip. There are so many different aspects of the movie that all combined to, again, one up the previous movie they brought us. Stunning visuals, and although not as funny as Monsters Inc., it really shines through. As with Monsters Inc., revisiting this movie has honestly given me a new perspective, and I have to say it's not one of my favorites anymore. The movie opens with the original Up opening, as we see Marlon and his wife look at their new home and kids and just take it all in. Unfortunately, a barracuda also has its eyes on their home and kids, as Marlon's knocked out trying to fight it, only to find his wife and all but only one of his kids have been eaten by the fish. He finds the last egg and names it Nemo, as his wife requested. Marlon grows overprotective of his son because of the attack, as Nemo now has a weak fin because of it. Later at school, Nemo is kidnapped by some divers because of him trying to prove to his father that he's brave. We later see that he's taken to a dentist aquarium where we meet the tank gang. In pursuit of Nemo, Marlon meets Dory, a blue tang with short-term memory loss, and together, they brave sharks, anglerfish, jellyfish, and whales, all to find Nemo at Sydney Harbor. A highlight I want to express about this movie from the beginning is the characters. Everyone is memorable. Marlon, Dory, Nemo, Gil, Crush, Nigel? There's no character that's not utilized from one end to the other. Dory as a foil to Marlon leads to one of the most powerful scenes in the film, and using Gil as a father figure for Nemo also works exceptionally well. Each character serves a specific purpose for Marlon on his jersey, not only to find his son, but also to learn how to let go of his overprotective ways and let Nemo just be himself at the end. Once again, Pixar knocks it out of the park with the leaps they took in water physics and animation. This movie is one of the first that truly feels like it could have been released today, even. The reef, open ocean, and even the humans are all just stylized enough that it does not look like nightmare fuel. This movie is absolutely beautiful, and every second I watched it, I was truly in awe of how everything looked and moved. I think this movie specifically captures the vastness of the ocean showing large expanses of nothing outside of the reef and how deep this ocean really does go. To make it, Pixar made several trips to Australia to dive around the Great Barrier Reef as well as scanned real fish in order to get an accurate representation of the aquatic life in their films. They also had a fish movement expert, which I didn't know was a real job till writing this to give accurate descriptions and advice as to how the fish moved in transverse in the water. Which makes sense because up until this point most of the animation was bipedal and it must have been truly hard to sell the fish swimming without making them look like someone just keyframed it and called it a day, as if they were floating in the air. The story itself is pretty tight, but also leaves some stuff to be desired in my eye. Each interaction Marlin has with the, in the ocean seems like a very parable-ish story. From meeting Dory, the sharks, Crush, the whale, every point in that is meant to serve a purpose, which is a good thing. However, it feels too in your face. As a kid's movie, I don't expect full narrative poetry that is wrapped in metaphors and such, but I do expect some level of respect for the viewer's ability to identify basic lessons, even for children. On Nemo's end, we have good growth from Nemo as he learns to be brave and believe in himself from the tank gang. However, they hammer home this point about the filter being super important and how they have to break the filter and they spend a good portion of the time trying to break it. But then it just is fixed and it's not worth anything after they achieve their goal of breaking it. I'm all for like MacGuffins, but this just felt awkward and a forced way to get Marlin to see Nemo dead at the end. This of course led to Dory's speech, which Ellen absolutely nailed on her second take no less. And to me, it just continues to be one of Pixar's best emotional moments. One final gripe I have is the lesson they take away that wraps the story is to swim down in the net. It's just from like this one second throwaway scene like t 10 minutes earlier. I don't know why but the whole end just felt rushed in a way to just get Dory to say her speech and everyone back to the reef by the end of it. Now the soundtrack is interesting because it's the first to be done by someone other than Randy Newman. 
And you do feel that. However, it's also done by his nephew Thomas Newman, who's known for doing films such as The Green Mile, The Lost Boys, and Shawshank Redemption. He comes from a more cinema-oriented background compared to his uncle, Randy, who was known mostly just for his like folk music prior to making music for Pixar, and also some film work. So because of this, the score kind of feels like Pixar is growing up a little bit in terms of the cinematic feeling. It really just feels like a great score that feels like it should be in a movie. He conveys the feeling of being in the ocean and the bubbliness as well as the dangers particularly well. However, because of this, I think it stands out less from the rest of the pack. This movie struggles with its identity almost with the music and in a way that the other Pixar movies just haven't really. And while the tracks are amazing, I don't think that while writing this I remembered a single note of any of the songs from the film. This sort of thing kind of continues for more of the films as a while. It's more grown up on many different levels. It almost fails because of certain aspects that don't help it stand out. It doesn't have the friendliness of Toy Story or the jazz aesthetic of from Monsters, Inc. And it lacks a lot because of that. One song that does kind of stand out is the Nemo Egg song from the beginning, which you should be able to hear from this segment from the beginning. Some cool little facts that you might not have known. Did you know that Willem Dafoe's in this movie? He plays Gil and I had no idea how I never picked up on that while I was a kid. I was super into Spider-Man. I don't know how I didn't pick that up at all. <laughs> also, this was the second film ever to receive a Navajo dub, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, it was re released in theaters for a very short period of time. And the song Beyond the Sea, which was covered by Fall Out Boy in the English version, was also sung by Patrick Stump for the Navajo version as well. I thought that was really cool. I never knew that. A113 can be seen on this clip on the camera when Marlon gets a picture taken of him. And the Pizza Planet truck is seen when Gil is explaining their escape plan on the road driving by in a montage. I hope everyone enjoyed this video as well as this film. For me, the movie just feels with the rush ending, lack of memorable soundtrack, and the step down from the funniness from Monsters, Inc. really brought this one down for me, which is a shame because it was one of my favorites when I was younger. However, the strong characters, serious tone, really do bring out a lot of good for me. But I have to place this one above A Bug's Life, but below the first Toy Story. Currently makes it around third on my list, and as for a number score, I'd give it like a six or a seven. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm sure this won't get an unwarranted sequel that messes with the characters in any way. Right? Again, I'll take these final last seconds uh, as a thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you all like watching these and enjoy these as much as I like making them. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And go ahead and check out my older videos. See you next time for something incredible.